The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the December 15th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Now, send that off early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any. In every ping, will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A mixed bag out there. You got the Dow down 32, the S&P off one, NASDAQ 100 up 95, Brussels down, well, it's basically flat. Semis are up 52, Trend is up 183, New York Stock Exchange off 86. It is a mixed bag. Gold's up three bucks, silver's down 14 cents. Sounds like a mixed bag there, too. Lights we crude is off 44 cents, natural gas is up eight pennies, the 30 treasury up about a half a point, printed out at 123.26. Now, the leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, dollar wise, Broadcom, 35 bucks there, a little over 3%. Booking Holdings, 24 bucks, less than 1%. Costco, up 21 bucks, a little over 3%. Mercado Libre, less than 1% or $14 move. And Alpha Metallurgical Resources, about a 5% move. That's nearly $13.60. To the downside, Elevance Health, off 16 bucks. Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, off 15 bucks. Molina's down 14. O'Reilly Automotive is off 13. IDEX Laboratories down seven. We got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin the day by taking a look at those daily equity and daily and weekly equity future contracts. So to do that, we'll change our panels. We'll go over to those white background screens, try to keep this as smooth as we can. And on the upper panel, the upper row, you've got the daily time frame. The lower um, row, you've got the weekly time frame. So upper panel on the ES Mini, upper left-hand side. You'll get a wave seven confirmation of a top if price does not spike the day above 47.9175. It has not done that yet. Day is still young. If it does, then that wave seven pattern just extends itself. If wave seven gets confirmed, we should see a retracement at least to the oscillator and change line. That is at the 47.22 mark. We take a look at the end, uh, the weekly time frame chart. Weekly time frame chart shows that price is above its uh, swing points out here. These are the swing points. Whoops, sorry about that. These are the swing points from the uh, week of uh, August, uh, July 28th out there. Uh, that is a uh, bullish signal there. And so the weekly chart is suggesting it wants to move higher. But before we go to the NQ, I see we've got a caller on the line who wants to talk about the NASDAQ 100. And that is John in Philly. John, thank you for calling. Thank you for holding. Happy Friday to you. How are you today? I'm doing well. Uh, same to you, Steve. We thank must you. have extra sensory perception here my friend i wish <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly we can always wish exactly 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 <laughs> um steve uh i am not a bear and actually i'm never a bull nor a bear i always try to follow the <clears throat> the sayings of uh David White, namely, uh, there's no right, uh, there's no bull, there's no bear, there's only the right side of the market, whatever it happens to be. 
Yes. Uh, with that said, uh, I have been uh, looking exclusively on the long side since that Sunday night, uh, October 29th, when the decline that preceding week did not extend lower. Having said all that, uh, Steve, people in the den know I have been remarking the past 24 hours about how close the MDX 100 has gotten to its July peak. I think the peak was on the 19th. It's gotten within uh, less than 1% of that high. My question to you, sir, is would you share with us any tools that you have that are warning of topping behavior? And perhaps you don't have any tools that give you such clues. And uh, regardless of that, uh, the second part is what are price levels that you can share with us on either the NASDAQ 100 or its derivative futures contract, that lead contract now, the March uh, and Q futures, what levels uh, must be broken to give clues that some sort of tradable high is in place. So that's my question. Thought I'd pose those two in detail and just listen to what you have to say. Okay, you got it. Uh, thanks for the question. I think I understand it. I'll do my best to answer that. And it's a great question. So uh, kind of like uh, what John was saying, that there's no right side of the market. Uh, and with regard to how I try to analyze these markets, I'm always looking for clues as well. And so the first clues of a potential top showed up yesterday. So let me, and those were coming from the daily time frame charts, and they were coming from three of the sectors with inside the S&P 500. Those three sectors being the XLK, the technology sector, information technology sector, the healthcare sector, and the consumer staples level, XLV and XLP. Now, the reason that, that yesterday this showed up on my screen, uh, now these, these represent nearly 50% or maybe over 50% of the weighting inside of the S&P 500. So it's really worth paying attention to the sectors as well. Much like when we take a look at an ETF, folks, we try to understand, you know, what are the top eight, 10 instruments doing? What's their weighting inside that ETF? Well, in the case of the XLK, what it did yesterday was it generated a key reversal bar. That key reversal bar confirmed a roads momentum indicator top. Key reversal bar requires three things, folks. The market must be in extended condition. It definitely was at that. We need to see the high and low of the prior bar get exceeded. And we need to see the market uh, close at least one penny, one tick, one pip, whatever it is you're trading, in the opposite direction of the trend. As I indicated to subscribers last night, even though we got that topping signal, what we also got was price testing and rejecting that green oscillator and change line. So that neutralized the signal, but it's still something worth watching. Now, as we speak right now, price is trading above the high of yesterday. That'll negate that signal altogether. So if the XLK closed above 192.08, what was a potential topping signal no longer would exist. In the case of the XLB, the healthcare sector, and that's trading lower this morning, this was a classic pattern that Tom teaches. Now, first, price was trading into a swing point that takes us back to July 24th. That was a TD9 count top for the XLV. But what price did was a test of that swing point. That had 12 million shares. Yesterday's test and rejection, because it closed below the low of that swing point, was with 10 million shares. Now we're seeing price do what it should do, and that's pull back to that oscillator and change line. 133.35 is its target. We come back to this break, folks. We'll take a look at the XLP, the third instrument, that gave us topping signals yesterday. We'll be right back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. We're looking at uh, the markets here. We're trying to find uh, any clues that a potential top could be forming out here. The third sector with inside the S&P 500 that gave a signal yesterday was the uh, consumer staples sector, XLP, and that generated a sell the D point pattern, formed a nice little dark cloud cover. It's wave number seven uh, that we have in place. And what price has done here, though, price has pulled back and has tested that oscillator and change line. Again, the reason I developed the oscillator and change line was to help me understand, help you understand, when a retracement is just really a retracement back to support. Markets are going to go up and down. The question is, when it's going down, is that a top? Or when it's going up, is that a bottom out there? Well, that oscillator and chain zone really helps us. You can see that is green. Pulling back and testing that, actually, that's a buy point. If price were to close below that, then that's not a buy point. That tells us that the next buy point would be 70.55 or 70.08 or 69.92 out there. But right now, that level of support is held. So John's question was, what clues do we have? Those are the three clues that we have right now. Now, as each of you know, we've also been talking about, we take a look at seasonal charts. I'm not going to pull those up right now. But we've been talking about the presidential seasonal cycle, the four-year cycle. Oh, we could see a market at the beginning of the year that typically heads lower uh, for quite some time. So what's a signal that that could be what we're looking at? Well, we're going to change screens here. So if you give me a moment, we'll get over to a different set of screens. These are going to be the same instruments. No, I take that back. These are going to be the Dow. These are going to be the cash instruments, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the semi out there. So if you give me a moment, we'll get to those. I think that is this screen right here. Let me see. Yeah, it is. Okay, perfect. So these are the monthly charts. So we've made some new all-time highs out here when it comes to the Dow, when it comes to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 hasn't made a new all-time high yet, but the semis have. But the, really the point that I wanted to make here to you, John, and everybody else, is that what was triggered yesterday is the Rhodes Minton Indicator signal. That tells you when price is moving higher, doing a less relative strength, but there's a couple other parameters that are associated with that. Now, what I can share with you, and those of you that have listened to the show for a number of years uh, or have been to any of my uh, workshops out there, you know that there is one pattern that has been present before every bear market that the Dow has ever generated going back to 1896. One pattern. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's the Rhodes Mintum Indicator pattern. It's present on either a daily, weekly, or monthly. Sometimes it's present on all. just depends on what's going on. But that does not mean that when that 
pattern is present, then it turns into a bear market. It just means that every single bear market ever, ever in the history of the Dow had a Rhodes momentum indicator signal or pattern that was present. So we want to be able to take a look at this too, John, because maybe what this is telling us is about a about a pullback that the uh, uh, election seasonal cycle has. This is longer term, but it is still something to monitor, and we monitor what's going on in the uh, daily time frame. Lastly, we'll just switch over and take a look at the NQ charts out here. We'll see what's going on from an intraday perspective to finish that off, and then we'll go out to uh, Fort Collins and speak with uh, Mark. But let's go ahead and change our screens out here. Let's get over to uh, this set of uh, charts. Now, this is the Dow, but let me go ahead and change this over to the NQ out here, since that is what was asked of. And we'll take a look at the uh, – so on the on a daily time frame for the NQ, what we have out here is no topping signal whatsoever. There was a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that had been triggered. It was triggered for uh, two bars out here. I don't know why this is delayed. Uh, and that's the whole reason why we don't just sell when the pattern – or buy when the pattern forms. You wait for the cavalry to tell us about that. And that re in this case here requires a bearish reversal candle. We don't have that. We don't have any kind of a uh, top that I'd be uh, concerned with at this stage of the game. Today's bar number seven. Maybe, John, we get a TD9 count pattern that forms between Monday and Wednesday of next week. Maybe we get that. If we take a look at intraday charts out here, we've got a wave number seven pattern on the five-hour chart. We've got nothing on the four-hour chart. We've got nothing other than price getting back to a breakdown resistance level on the 120-minute time frame chart. The 60-minute chart, we're just trading with inside profile levels. So there's no really huge signals here. Uh, John, my apology. I thought that you had hung up, uh, uh, and uh, but I didn't realize you were hanging on. We could have had I would have looked forward to our discussion. But, so I misheard you. My apology uh, for that. So uh, basically, with regard to the NQ, what's another area that you could look at here? You can certainly take a look at key levels of support that need to be broken. Now, this is the 60-minute time frame chart for the uh, NQ. And if we're going to see any kind of change in trend at all, uh, we need to see at least the key level of support broken. That's at 16,732. I don't recall on the 120 minute chart, but we'll put this time frame up here. Uh, nope, that has even broken one. So I'd be watching for that on a, a 60 minute time frame. Uh, John is another potential clue out there. Then, of course, you know, we do have uh, perigee that is coming in over the weekend. So you and I, everybody else will have a new pivot point to watch come uh, Sunday evening. So I uh, hope that that uh, helped describe uh, that to you. Again, my apology. Didn't realize that you were still on the line. Let's go out to Fort Collins and speak with uh, Mark. Mark, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Excellent. So HRTX, uh, that's what you, I believe you're calling about. Tell me what you're doing, how I can best help you. Well, I started scaling into this. Um, it's My wife uses it. She's a physician, um, does anesthesia, and she uses it for uh, one of their products for pain management, and it does not cause nausea. So she thinks it's a wonderful product. So we started looking at it and bought some shares um, my average price is probably around a buck sixty-five. Wondered what your thoughts are on it. Okay, well, I'll tell you what it's doing right now. So first of all, you got a nice bottoming pattern on the weekly time frame. So here we're looking at the multi time frame set of charts, uh, folks. So uh, Mark and, and I can take a look at it. So first, we'll start off, I guess, with the monthly time frame. And the monthly time frame chart. If you're asking me where is re so, it's got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So you love that. You've got that on the on the uh, monthly. You've got that on the weekly chart. Uh, you've got that on the daily time frame chart. So that's a beautiful thing. So the next battleground for your longer term trade, the monthly, is going to be the bottom of its daily profile. And that's currently at uh, 201. Above that's 247, and above that is 294. So that's your longer term levels of battles that you have. On a weekly time frame, it's dealing with that battle as we speak right now, and that's at a buck 73. Now you are trading; it's trading just above that right now. It's trading at a buck 76, so I've got a little bit of a delay out here. But if you can close above a buck 73 and do that today, that's real positive for you, and that would then signal. Well, there is one other area of resistance that I see on a weekly basis, Mark, and that's the swing point from August 11. That was a bearish shooting star. And so you really would like to see it close above that. It doesn't have to be today. But if you can clear 187, close above 187, then that should get us back to the highs from back in April in about the 290-ish type area out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the weekly time frame chart. 
on a daily time frame chart, we don't see any kind of a topping signal out here. Here was a Roach momentum indicator signal that was triggered. That was on November 9th. The confirmation of that pattern came with the gap to the upside on November 15th. Uh, it has been able to take out two TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. This is suggesting to you and I that it's just dealing with this resistance of prior swing points coming back to August the 10th. Now, that swing head volume mark of 2.4 million shares, yesterday you're up into it with um, 3.9 million shares. So that's a beautiful thing. That says that the high should be tested. The high out there is at a buck 87. Of course, you'd like to see a close above that buck 87. That would then say that this thing is going to continue to head even higher. We get back to this break here, Mark. Stay with us. I'm going to look at the A to B equals CD pattern. You've probably already explored this, but we'll see if uh, where that would take us to for the daily time frame for HRTX Heron Therapeutics. We'll be right back. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're studying the charts of hearing the hear therapeutic sticker symbol here is HRTX is with Mark in Fort Collins, Colorado. And on a daily time frame, it does have an A to B equal CD pattern uh, to the upside. That B point had volume of uh, 7.9 million shares. It has not been passed with volume, as you probably already know. That doesn't mean that it's not going to go ahead and extend up towards that uh, price projection level. The one to one price projection level is 206. That retracement, this B to C, was about 33%. Uh, a retracement. So I'm going to say it's close enough to the 0.382 requirement that I have out there. That would suggest more likely a move to 231, the 1.272 expansion out there. So all this looks good. Now, if you're, today's an inside bar day, and as long as it stays like that, that tells us the existing trend should continue. If price did pull back, Mark, the level of support, or at least the initial level of support on the daily time frame is at a buck sixty-two. And here's an interesting thing that I identified, and that is this. I'm going to put up the 30-minute time frame chart because it sounds to me like you and your wife are accumulating stock. So where's the next potential buy point? Remember the daily chart said it was a buck sixty-two. The 30-minute chart says it's a buck sixty-one. So I like that when things come together. Those red vertical horizontal lines that you're looking at, those are all TD9 count breakout levels out there. We can see that none of those have uh, failed. So if price did pull back to the buck 61 level, that could be a gift or a place where you would uh, add some additional shares. Mark, what questions do you now have after that review daily, weekly, monthly? That's, uh, no, that was all great. That gives me a lot of um, good information and some of that stuff I had kind of, kind of thought of was was accurate so that's that's good to confirm that um, cool. so that's about it so okay. um, i think you've helped me out if you um don't have anybody else waiting i have one more question for you but if you don't do, go right ahead you, you, another day. no no you're on the you're on the phone you you got it my focus is on you so uh so nobody's the waiting long-term holdings i have in um, a retirement um, account is um the vxf which is a small cap fund i think it's like a small cap 1000 type fund okay to, um federal government type retirement options yep. and um like the dow jones small cap something something i can't remember the name of it um it's the, yeah, it says it's the vanguard extended market. market index so go yeah ahead. yeah uh, so, you know, at this stage, what's what's the question that you have? Just trying to understand where this might be so, headed to? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's a long-term holding. I'm looking at um, kind of a comparison. I, I have that and, like, the SPY in that, in that long-term retirement fund, and I'm just kind of wondering what your thoughts are on that, like, versus the general bigger, bigger cap stock market. <laughs> Well, uh, here's what I can here's what I can share with you. If I take a look at the monthly time frame chart, which is what I would do in trying to understand from a longer term perspective what this is doing. What you like is the fact that this uh, formed a TD9 count bottom was actually not completed until August of 2022. Uh, it was bar number eight, the June low that identified that actual low that is held, and now price on a monthly basis is inside a bullish structured profile. Prices above the green oscillator and change line. Those are bullish conditions out there. And because it's a bullish structure profile, it tells you and I that seller, buyers over time should be able to push price up to resistance. And right now on a monthly basis, that's at 172.78 out there. So that would be the resistance point. If price can overcome that, then we should see rally up to 200.58. This formed a Rosemont Dominicator top back in November of 2021. So it is behaving and is following the patterns that we typically see out here that help us identify uh, tops and bottoms. So to me, this looks like this wants to run to 172, 78, and again above that, 258. As to whether this is a better holding than the S&P, uh, that would require more than just the, you know, I would want to give that a 30-second kind of yeah, uh, uh, you know, view out there. Um, but this, uh, when I look at the weekly chart, I don't see any kind of a topping pattern, nor do I on the yeah. daily time frame. So it looks pretty good. And longer term, I think, yeah, it's headed up to 172 ish area. Awesome. Hey, do you have a okay. quarterly chart of that, or do you do that? I can put up a quarterly chart, so it'll take me just a second here. Let's just change this. We can, uh, right now, this is set to the monthly time frame. And what I do here, folks, as soon as I can. Um, data series is I can take a monthly chart and for the value instead of one month I can put it to three months out there so that'll go ahead and put this in here so let's go see what uh, that tells us so this shows us a wave seven top a roads meant to indicator top that took place in November of 2021 and what that did was that took price all the way back to support 
and support was the bottom of its profile. There's a new profile that formed out here back in uh, August or the September uh, quarter out here. Uh, and price right now is dealing with that resistance level. And that resistance level on a quarterly basis, so at the end of December, you'd love to see a close above 162.16. You get a close above 162.16, quarterly says you're off to those highs, those that all-time high out there. How's that for you? Okay. That's great. That's very similar to the monthly, so that's perfect. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was Mark and Fort Collins. Let's get to some of the other requests that uh, came in. Let me uh, get uh, away from this chart here. And the first one came in yesterday from Mimi, and Mimi wanted to take a look at, um, uh, excuse me, ticker symbol AU, Anglo Ashanti, out there. So let's go take a look at it, daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. And what we have here, and I did share uh, with, uh, I did share with uh, Mimi, uh, the uh, actual charts out there. And right now, what price is doing is price is back inside its daily profile. Well, I do have a little bit of a delay. Let me see what it's really doing out here. I showed that profile level at 1791. You're at 1796. So you'd love to see this day above 1791. If it gets back inside that profile, 1791 is the, uh, is the uh, number out there, you'll be below then a red oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. And that would suggest we just have a consolidation with price likely targeting 1637 to 1698. We don't have any kind of a top out here inside of AU. And maybe this is just a large consolidation between the $15 area to the $20 area. I'm just using the range out there, 1888. That's the high that we've seen come in so far this week, and that high happened to be the top of that profile. That's how those profiles work. In a monthly time frame, it says you're not out of the woods because price found resistance at that green oscillator and change line. So watch the daily time frame. Watch 1791. Mimi, if price closes below that, we're likely to get a further retracement. Could easily get us back to 1637 to 1698. Dan inside the Tiger's Den, he's our Saba expert. He's our expert at many things out there. And we take a look at Saba. The issue that Saba has, because Saba Sciences, that is, folks, is at 3150. And 3150 happens to be the weekly TD Nike out breakdown level out there. So you can see it formed a beautiful Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom pattern. It did that with a bullish engulfing candle, did that with a three river morning star formation. Price was able to take out profile resistance, and now it was attacking its TD Nike out breakdown level at 3150. Does that mean it's a top? No, it means that it's just real resistance out there. When we take a look at the daily time frame, what we see is a a to B equals CD pattern. It has completed, basically completed the one to one move, Dan. That one to one move would be in 32.34. The actual high out there, I think just a few pennies below that, the actual high is 32.10. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll finish looking at Cassava Sciences as soon as we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a Cassava Sciences SAVA as a ticker symbol. It has completed the one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD. The only thing there that you need to be concerned with, um, uh, Dan, is if a bearish reversal candle were to form. That would then generate a sell the D point uh, top, and that would then say price should pull back to that oscillator and change line, currently printed at 2680 out there. Short of that, price should make a move to 3591. Why? Because that retracement was a 47% retracement. That's from this bar number nine. Price pulls back, makes a uh, bottom back on November 13th. That was the C point of that A to B equals CD to the upside out there. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, typically when you do uh, less than a 0.618 retracement, you'll do more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the upside. So your issue or its issue is really 31.50. And if you can clear that, then we should see you move up to 38.53 over time. That's the monthly TD9 count breakdown level. So all looks pretty good for me. We take a look at uh, Cassava Sciences, S-A-V-A. Hope that helps you out. John C., the Tigers then wanted to take a look at uh, Coinbase. C-O-I-N is a ticker symbol. Uh, today, pulling back and getting to a buy point, that buy point being the daily green oscillator and change line. That's pretty right now at 147.97, the actual low of the day, 147.93. We don't have any kind of a topping pattern, at least just yet. If we did get a bearish reversal candle, then we'd have a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. So the daily time frame uh, says that it wants to continue to move higher. So too does the weekly time frame. Now there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. I can see that it's achieved more than the one-to-one -one, uh, level out there. There's a Rhodes Mentum indicator indicator signal on the daily time frame so i don't have to really worry about the a to b equals cd pattern out here the next level of resistance out here john is its td9 count breakdown area on the weekly time frame 162.44 now on a monthly time frame the end of december this will complete a td9 count top out there so it does offer a bit of warning message to you and just simply watch that high why because if price starts trading above that high and certainly close above that high in the month of uh, january well then that pattern gets negated and says that coinbase wants to move up to 323 out there so that's what i see when i take the coinbase charts i hope that that helps you out and thanks so much for the request as always not a trader wants to take a look at ticker symbol u and U is a United Unity Software out here. And Unity Software, on a daily time frame, it's about to do battle. It's about to do battle with where price broke down from. And that was at 39.74. Uh, right now, you're trading at 39.34 out there, the high of the day. 39.65. Now, if price can close above 30, really, the level you're looking for price to close above, not a trader, is the TD9 count top that is still in place out here from the trading day of September the 6th out there. That's the level you need to see price close above. That level is 40.05. To then suggest that price wants to make a move up to its next TD9 count breakdown level at 44.03. Now there's an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. If a bearish reversal candle were to form not a trader, you're gonna get a sell the D point pattern. Sell the D point patterns would suggest price pulling back to support. Since the profiles are below the oscillator and change line, the oscillator and change line would be its target, 34.11. That's what it's printing at now. 
We don't have the top in place, so I don't know what that number is going to be then. On a weekly time frame, you're going to close above the top of its weekly profile. Looks to me like it wants to go target its high. And that's from the week of July 21st out there. And that's between 43.74 at the low and 50.08 at the high. On a monthly basis, it tells you about the next little resistance area, and that's where price is basically trading into 40.31. So 4031 happens to be the top of its monthly profile. 3974 is a TD9 count breakdown level. And again, on the daily time frame, the high from that uh, September 6th uh, time frame. Was it September 6th or September 8th? It was September 6th. Is at 4005. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Unity software. The next question coming in from Dan in New York City. And Dan wants to take a look at Nordic American tankers. And Dan, your question was buy, hold, or sell. I'm going to tell you right now, it's an absolute buy. This generated, I wish you'd called me about this two days ago. Why? Because what it did was it confirmed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom pattern. you love that. Why? Because at the bottom, price gets so stretched, it's kind of like that ball in the uh, pool. You know, you try standing on it, pushing it down, and eventually, you know, it's going to just simply snap out of there, come shooting out of the water, and move higher. And that's what Nordic American Tankers is doing as we speak. I can see it also had an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside, so it formed a buy the point pattern you don't need two bottoms you just need one but i especially like the roads mintum indicator signal because that snapback doesn't always snap back but oftentimes it does the majority of times it does now in the case of nordic american tankers dan in new york city price is going to take out the top of its daily profile that's bonus number two here and that's a lot as long as price closed above 394 today price is back inside its weekly profile says that last week close below it was a false breakdown now what price will do is try to find Take, take on its next resistance level. And that's at 410. If price can close above 410, you ought to see 431 out of this. On a monthly time frame, the pullback, so this still has a TD9 count top that's in place, but the pullback, and that was probably uh, two days ago, was a test of that green oscillator and change on, on a long-term basis. That was a buy point. Knowing that it's still a neutral overall signal, but it won't be neutral if you can get Nordic American tankers to close above 465. If you do that, you're off to the races out there. So Nordic American tankers, it ain't a sell. It is a hold. And you can still buy it. Of course, you'd like to do is buy it on the first retracement out there. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we don't have anything in the cards right now that suggests that that's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, so good trade. Stay with Nordic American tankers. Nicholas writes in. He wants to take a look at Bank of America. BA is the ticker symbol out here. Let's go take a look at uh, that. Uh, Sanel, with regard to coin, uh, you go back and take a look at it. But it looks, my recollections look pretty good. But just replay this, and uh, we went through that in detail. Bank of America on a monthly time frame, you got to love that it's trading above its breakdown level of 241.80. That's a bullish signal. You're in bar number seven on a weekly basis, and you're trading above a TD9 count breakdown area. You have an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's see, the B point out there is for Bank of America had volume of 22 million shares. When that was passed, and that was last week, it was with. 27 million shares. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside in Bank of America on the weekly time frame. I'm going to give you, wow, I'm going to give you what that price projection level is. I'm going to do that off the screen here as opposed to going back and forth. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the real deal out here. Here's the real big one. So let me put in the A point. There's the B point out here. Let me get the C point. And then we're all set. So one to one. Now, it was a 51% retracement. The one-to-one -one price projection level on Bank of America is 306.33. But see this move here, this vertical move that we've had over the course of the last uh, seven weeks out there. Uh, that tells us this should do more than a one-to-one. -one. And 341.71 would be the price target. So that's what we see when we take a look. I'm sorry. I said Bank of America. I meant Boeing out there. BA is the ticker symbol. Um, uh, so that's what I see. And on a daily time frame, you can see this thing has been just climbing the wall of that oscillator and change line. Strong momentum to the upside. You didn't need Stevie to tell you that. Last buy point was on that TD9 count top that came back and tested and rejected that oscillator and change line. That was back on December the 7th. Maybe you get another TD9 count top that forms uh, sometime next week. But right now, Boeing looks very, very good. Your question is, is there a retracement coming? And you have to watch the very short-term time frame charts. Maybe there's a short-term retracement that's coming. The 65-minute time frame chart, and that's one of the time frames we use, 65 minutes, because it divides equally into the 390-minute trading session. You're going to get a TD9 count top 
that completes, it already completed. So I still got that delay out here. Uh, but basically that's completing right about now. So see if that pulls back, if it does, it should find support around 257, if not there, 251.72. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll look at Pinterest when we get back and Starbucks. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Tigers, it's the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. Sorry about that, folks. Stevie had a brain fart out there, a stinky one. It was supposed to be Bank of America that we were looking at for uh, uh, for whoever had requested it. My apology. Here we take a look at Bank of America. You're going to get. Looks like you're going to get a wave seven top uh, formation today. That's as long as yes, uh, yesterday's high doesn't get taken out. Yesterday's high out there is up at 3407. So what should unfold here with a topping pattern is uh, Bank of America should pull back to test the Sasser and change line. That's his first level of support. And that's around 3205. If I take a look at the weekly time frame, in bar number seven, you're taking out a TDI account breakdown resistance. All that looks good, but you're trading into heavy congestion, perhaps heavy congestion. Now the trading week of 
uh, March the 10th, this move lower with 407 million shares. So far this week, you are up with 263 million shares. So it's coming into that area with some light volume, which suggests at least a retracement back to 3205. That's what I see when we take a look at Bank of America. I hope you like the uh, review on Boeing as well out there, but thanks for correcting me. A request to take a look at the pins. This is for Sat P inside, inside the Tiger's Den. And the question is where to book gains? Well, I don't see any top that's in place on the daily time frame. I don't see one on the weekly time frame, and I don't see one on the monthly time frame. I think this is going to head higher out there. Now, on a weekly basis, I can see an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. That would say if a weekly bearish reversal candle were to form, you'd get to sell the D point pattern out here. Uh, price is dealing with resistance. That's at 36.95. Let me see where Pinterest, P I N, I think it's Pinterest, P I N S, is trading that right now. That is uh, uh, trading at 36.97. So if you can close above 36.95, that would be another positive out there. Even if you don't, it's just up at a resistance level. That doesn't mean that it's the end of the uh, move out here. Um, watch for a bearish reversal candle on the daily time frame. That would also give you a sell the D point pattern. But otherwise, Pinterest looks like it wants to move higher. Real quickly for Starbucks, and realize we had five seconds. Starbucks is consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's what we've got to go with. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Take care.